Geometry Common Core Regents Review Video 2. So the first thing I want to talk about is trig functions, and I know that's kind of a, a broad term. There's a lot going on in trig functions, and there's a, a couple of different things I want to hit in this video. And I'm actually going to do this a little out of order. I'm going to do this first que this question first, and then I'll go back up here. Um, so first thing, determine the measure of both missing angles to the nearest degree. So I'm given this right triangle, ABC. C I know is 90 degrees based on our little box there. I'm given the length of AC is 8, the hypotenuse AB is 11, uh, but I do not know the measure of angle A and I do not know the measure of angle B. Let's start with angle A. So the way we get the measure of an angle from its sides is using trig. And you have to remember sine is opposite over hypotenuse, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent is opposite over adjacent, so SOHCAHTOA. And so if I'm working with angle A, the two sides that I have, well, we know that 11 is the hypotenuse, and the side uh, AC, labeled 8, is adjacent to A. And so the opposite side over here, CB, we don't have. And we'll, we'll deal with that in a little bit. But since we don't have it, we're not going to use it. And so adjacent and hypotenuse, that is our cosine function there. So the way we're going to find that missing angle A is using cosine. But we're actually using inverse cosine function to get it. And the way we do that is we write it as an inverse cosine is that little negative 1 symbol. And then in parentheses next to it, not on the other side of the equal sign, but next to it, you put what's adjacent over hypotenuse, and so that would be 8 over 11. And this is going to get us the measure of angle A. So it's inverse cosine 8 over 11 will get us angle A. And so we're going to have to use our calculators for this. It's not something you really want to do without a scientific calculator here. Make sure your calculator is on degree mode. So if you check that, make sure you're on degree mode. And so the way we do inverse sine, cosine, and tangent, you've got to hit the second key, so second cosine, and then our 8 divided by 11. Close those parentheses, and here we get 43.34. We want to round this to the nearest degree, so it's going to be 43 degrees. So angle A is 43 degrees, so 43 degrees. And so let me add that 43 in there. Now for angle B, I, I could do the same kind of thing. I, I could do inverse sine with 8 over 11, because this 8 over here would be opposite of angle B, where 11 is still the hypotenuse, so that'd be sine, inverse sine 8 over 11 would give me the complement of that. But I do know these angles add to 90 degrees. They are complements, and so I could just, if I'm sticking with the nearest degree here, this would be 47, because they have to add to 90. So 90 minus 43 is where I could get that 47, 90 minus 43 is 47. Okay, so that's uh, both our angles. So angle B, the other angle I wanted is 47 degrees. Okay, now let me I'll go back up to the question I skipped. Again, we're given two sides here. We're given a side that measures 8, a side that measures 11, but we're not given side CB. I'm going to call this side, this missing side, I'm going to call it side A because it's opposite angle A, and we use lowercase letters for opposite the capital letter angles. It's an interesting question. It doesn't even ask us to solve for that side. We will. But what it asks us to do is to create five different equations that could be used to solve for this side. And I think the fact that we have two sides already, the one that maybe is the most obvious is probably Pythagorean theorem. We could do A squared plus 8 squared equals 11 squared. You know, um, make sure that you do it in the right order. Sometimes people might do 8 squared plus 11 squared. But remember, you're, you're not finding the hypotenuse, you're finding a leg. So here we would have to subtract, you know, 8 squared and then do square root and stuff. But I'm not, I'm not going to solve it just yet. I just want to set up the equations. So Pythagorean theorem is one option. Remember, Pythagorean theorem is only an option when you have two sides and you want the third. Like if I were missing this 8, if I only had the 11, then I couldn't do Pythagorean theorem. I'd have to do trig. But here was an option. But we could do trig because we know these angles. That's why I wanted to do this question first. Because now that I know these angles, I can use those angles paired with a side to find a. Now I have a lot of options here. That's why I'm going to be able to create five different equations. Say I want to use angle A and the 8. 
So I want to use the 43 and the 8 with this A. So from 43, from angle A, which is 43 degrees, the missing side is opposite. Right? It's across from it. I could draw an arrow in here if I wanted to. I'm missing the opposite of that angle. And the 8, which I have, is adjacent. So that would be a tangent function. So we could write the trig function of tangent 43 equals a over 8. And I could cross multiply that and solve for a. Or using the 43, if I want, I could do, um, I could work with angle A and the 11. And so what would that be? Again, I'm looking for the opposite, but now I'm going to use the hypotenuse. And opposite and hypotenuse pair up to be sine. So I could also do sine 43. And this would be A over 11. All right, and uh, so that's three equations right there. All three of them would give me the same thing. Uh, how about the other ones? Well, the other ones are going to be using the angle 47. So with 47 paired with A, A is opposite 47. And what I'm looking for is adjacent to 47, so opposite adjacent. So that is tangent. So I could use tangent again, uh, tangent of 47. But this time, it's not going to be A over 8. Opposite over adjacent is 8 over A. And so we see that when we use tangent of the complementary function, it ends up being a reciprocal. And the last one is I could use the 47 paired with the 11, so paired with the hypotenuse, looking for adjacent. That would be cosine. So I could do cosine of 47 equals a over 11. Now, any one of these is, give me the, is going to give me the measure of that side. Um, like if I were to look at uh, this one right here, I'd do 8 times tangent 43. Uh, so let me get my calculator back up. 8 times tangent 43. 8 times, oops, I got to, there we go. Uh, so 8 times tangent 43 is 7.46. That's what this is. So it's about 7, we'll say, we'll round it to the nearest tenth, and say what, 6, and it tell us to find it. Let's round it to the nearest tenth. Let's say 7.5. 7.5. And um, all these equations are going to give me the same thing. Um, like if you look at some of these other options here, um, like here I could do 11 times, if I cross multiply this one, the sine 43 equals A over 11, 11 times sine 43. 11 times sine 43. 7.5. Now the decimals are slightly different because remember these angles aren't exactly 43 and 47. I rounded these to be whole numbers. So they're going to be slightly different. But they could all be used to get that. Um, remember, you know, you're just cross multiplying these things, but you have to be careful when your trig equation is something like this one, where if I cross multiply here, I'm not done. I would have a tangent 47 equals 8, and I'd actually have to then divide by tangent 47. So sometimes you cross multiply. Basically, if your variable is the numerator, like these three are, a is on top, it's just 11 times close 47, 8 times tangent 43, 11 times sine 43. Those are the easy ones. But if your variable is on the bottom, then you actually end up dividing because you cross multiply and you're not quite done because cross multiplying doesn't get the variable alone. So you have to do a little bit of extra work there. So 8 divided by tangent 47. So this is a, covers a lot of trig functions. The one last thing I want to cover here is why these are the same. They're both a over 11, a over 11. Sine 43 equals cos 47. I'm going to write that over here. Sine 43 equals cosine of 47. This is the co-functions concept. And basically what it's saying is that sine is going to equal cosine when the angles add to 90. Sine equals cosine when angles sum to 90. Because what we're saying is that, you know, if the angles sum to 90, they're the two complementary acute angles. And what's opposite one, like using, you know, this side A, for example, what's, you know, opposite 43 is the same thing as adjacent 47. So switching the function from sine to cosine and also switching the acute angle keeps the same ratio. What's opposite 43 over hypotenuse 
is the same thing as adjacent 47 over hypotenuse. That's why sine equals cosine if the two angles are complements, if they are the two acute angles of the same triangle. So remember that co functions is a very important topic, comes up a lot. All right, that's enough trig. Let's uh, move on to some prisms versus pyramids stuff. Um, prisms versus pyramids, there's just one thing I want to point out here is remember that the volume of a prism, the formula you're given is area of the base times height, the capital B, which means area of the base. And a pyramid is simply a third of that, one third the area of the base times the height. So I, I drew these so that they have the same base and the same height, but a prism comes to the same shape as the base on top, a pyramid comes to the point. And this is the case for all prisms and pyramids. Whatever the area of that base is, the area of this base, you know, it happens to be a square base for these. Um, and a square base is just side times side. So the area of this base is 9. The area of this base is 9. So for the volume of this prism, the area of the base is 9 times the height of 4. 9 times 4 is 36. Well, the volume of this pyramid, 1 third the area of the base is 9 times the height of 4. So one third of 36 is 12. And so your pyramids are always a third of your prisms. And remember, you could do these formulas backwards, like if I needed to, you know, say they give the volume and they give the base stuff and I'm solving for the height, well, you know, I could times 3 to remove the third over there and divide by h if I needed to solve for the base kind of thing. So you could always rearrange these formulas if you need to solve for a different aspect. But just remember that the pyramids are a third of the prisms. Last thing, point-slope formula. Very common equation. Uh, it's really a connection of algebra 1 and algebra 2. The point-slope formula you have to have memorized. Y minus Y1 equals M parentheses X minus X1. Very, very important formula you need to have memorized. Not given to you on your reference sheet. So we want the equation of a line. Anytime you want the equation of a line, you're going to do this. It's going to be y minus a y value. They tell you it passes through the point. So this is what I'm using as my x1, y1. My y value is 4. My m, I'll get to in a minute, but x minus the x value, so minus a negative 2. And that minus negative is going to end up being plus 2, because we need minus a negative. But what is the slope of this line? Well, what they tell you is that it is perpendicular. You definitely want to circle or underline keywords like that to this equation. So what's the slope of this equation? Well, if we get it in standard form, which isn't much, just move that constant over, minus 3. The slope of this line right here is 2. And perpendicular to that is the negative reciprocal. So remember, 2 is like 2 over 1. The reciprocal would be 1 over 2, but it's the negative reciprocal, so we've got to negate it. So perpendicular to this line is negative 1 half. So a lot of times I tell you, if I said parallel, I would use the same slope too. Perpendicular is the negative reciprocal. And then I just got to, uh, you know, distribute that slope in here. So let me distribute that slope. So we end up with y minus 4 equals negative half times x is negative half x. Negative a half times 2 is negative 1. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add 4, add 4 to get y alone for my final answer of y equals negative one-half x plus three. That's it. All right, that's it for Common Core Geometry Regents Review Video 2.